Hi everyone, welcome to Facebook Live with Pastor Louie. Good to see you Lalo, Penny, all you guys watching, tuning in right now. We're going to have a great time. Hey, it's after Christmas and before the New Year's. We're kind of stuck in the middle, aren't we? What do we do at this time? Let's have Facebook Live. Thanks for joining. We're just going to be focusing on the Lord. We're going to be talking about the New Year. We need some inspiring thoughts to kind of get us through this last week of the year. Amen? And we want to go into that new year confident in all that God has for us. So we just invite you to relax now. Just, you know, put everything away if you can. If not, just listen while you, while you, you work or whatever. And, and uh, we just want to give this program to the Lord. So join me in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this time. And we just want to honor you, Lord. And just thank you for a good Christmas time and Lord, we just thank you for the new year coming. We just can't believe that we've already had, you know, the holidays and uh, Thanksgiving and all. And here we are, Lord. We're, we're excited. We're starting to reflect because of uh, Christmas being over. And, and we just want, Lord, to now have the scriptures. We want to have the focus of Christ as we go into the new year, Lord. There's always so much competing for our interests. And we just want to slow down a little bit. And to worship you and to focus, Lord, to, to worship you with these songs and to tune into that Bible study. I pray, Lord, for my brothers and sisters that you'd be with them in the Facebook community, Lord, that they would be blessed tonight. They would be filled up with you, Lord, that this would just be a, a surprise blessing for them because they've come in the house. And maybe for some they didn't anticipate it, but they're going to be watching it. And we thank you, Lord, for that. We just pray your spirit would take over and captivate our hearts and renew our minds. And we pray for all those who just need that hope and those who are doubtful, those who are hurting, Lord, at this time, those who are lonely, those who just aren't, aren't really having a good season, Lord. We pray especially for them that they would be lifted up, Lord. So for all of us, we pray blessings. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's worship the Lord. The first couple songs here are um, encouraging for the new year, so, you know, these were hand-selected for that. Uh, this first song is called, It Is No Secret What God Can Do, and it's, it was a Billy Graham favorite, you know, sung at the Billy Graham Crusades, and uh, Stuart Hamblin is the one who wrote it, uh, who uh, converted as a, you know, a cowboy uh, singer and so forth. This has been covered by Elvis Presley and, and so many, uh, but we're going to up the tempo a little bit on it, and um, just think about what it says. It is no secret what God can do. Amen. The chimes of time ring out the news another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone God. 
true? What God can do, even though we might stumble and fall, and with the new year we can just go right in with God's grace and, and just do really well, you know, and uh, be blessed and look forward to all of his blessings. Because it says in the Bible that nothing is impossible. Remember what the angel told Mary, all things are possible with God, and she believed, and there was the virgin birth right there. So we're going to sing this old song here. It's an old gospel song. I remember it from the old uh, Southern Baptist Church Choir. And um, it is called Nothing is Impossible. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to be. Is there anything too hard for me? So put your trust in God alone and rest upon His Word. For everything, yes, everything, yes, everything is possible with God. Nothing is impossible. When you're trusting in His Word Hearken to the voice of God to thee Is there anything too hard for me? So put your trust in God alone And rest upon His Word For everything, yes everything, yes everything is possible time. Let's proclaim it. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to be. Is there anything too hard for me? So put your trust in God alone and rest upon that. I claim that for you, and I claim it for myself, and we just claim it for each other. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. Amen. You know, we'll just be confident and just be built up in the Lord as we go into that new year. There's another song chosen for uh, this Facebook Live program. It's called, He is Able, and that's a beautiful phrase in Scripture, He is Able, because He is able. We're not able. We're not strong enough. But the Bible says when we're weak, we are strong. It's just nice to know that God can pull it off. You know, God can do the miracle. And he gives us faith to believe. And that's what we need on our part. All we have to do is believe, brothers and sisters. And then God just does the work because we can't. We're weak. But where we are weak, he is what? That's right. I heard someone say that. He is strong. He is able. More than able to accomplish what consumes me today. He, he is able, more than able to handle anything that comes my way. more than I could ever dream. 
what a promise that is, that God is able. And we just want to encourage you to leave your prayer requests on the uh, open forum there on the wall and get other people to uh, pray for you. Right now, just type them out. Put your amens out there. Let us know that you're uh, uh, watching. Just love to see you. Um, you know, give that thumbs up and, and be praying for this program. And we just pray for those who, who just walk right in this program and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Man, you know, give your life to the Lord. And you know, when I came to the Lord, uh, it was uh, New Year's Day. And man, that last day of the year, I'm telling you, I said, enough of the world, man. Enough of this. I didn't like what was going on and just my choices and where sin led me, led me low. And uh, I just wanted to start the new year out with Jesus. And you know what? I did by His grace. And uh, my life was changed right in that first uh, day of the new year. And I just pray that for you, for those of you who are just watching right now and, and maybe you're part of another religion uh, maybe, or maybe you knew the Lord at one time and you've just gone away into the things of the world and, and gotten caught up and you're watching this right now. Maybe, you know, I know some of you from, from uh, the old days, you know, uh, but you have strayed. Well, haven't we all? And maybe you've really gotten, uh, you know, mixed up and just all knotted up, you know, and we just know that the Lord could unscramble the eggs, you know, he really can. If you give your life to Christ, watch what he will do. No matter where you're at, how far you've been involved in the things of this world, you know, away from Christ. He'll take you back. Let me tell you something. What my uh, old Baptist pastor said when I was just away from the Lord. I remember him saying this and I really, it really got to me. He said to the congregation, he said, you can take a thousand steps away from the Lord, but there's only one step back. Oh my goodness. And I remember that. I remember that. And that was a little seed back there in my mind and in my heart to know that I didn't have to take you know, a thousand steps back to the Lord. It was one step back and the Lord heard my prayer. My life changed. I knew Jesus was the way, but I just wasn't walking with the Lord. What a wonderful opportunity now to take up your cross, my friend, and to walk with Jesus. I want to pray for you right now. I feel led to pray uh, for salvation right now. If you want to give your life to the Lord or rededicate your life to the Lord, say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I realize that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way. The Bible is true, and the gospel is true, and I hear what Pastor Louis is saying, and I just want to receive of your love and make that fresh dedication to you, Lord. I want to give my life to you and ask, Lord, that you would change me and rearrange me and, and just make me new inside. Lord, I'm sorry for my sins and how I have strayed and made compromises in my life, and I want to start that new year out. You know, just like Pastor Louis said, and, and to be new, and to be that new creation in Christ. Oh God, give me the power right now, and change me by your Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for that. I just give it to you now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, I can really sense the Spirit is moving, and just that beautiful pleading of the Holy Spirit saying, Come, come to me. And, you know, it's just wonderful. And we have a Bible study right now that we want to, I want to share with you. So turn to James chapter 5 and verses uh, 10 through 11. And if you can't turn there, then you might be on, on a hospital bed. You might be sick with a bad cold and you're on the couch or in, in your bedroom and, and just, you know, blowing your nose and just not feeling good. I pray the Lord heals you in Jesus' name that you'll be uplifted with the Word of God, and uh, wherever you're at, just receive of God's Word. The topic is, if you endure, you will be blessed. And isn't that great? And I want to just lay it, the foundation down a little bit, because it kind of is goes like this. Some of us aren't ending the year really strong. 
So we're going to need endurance to go into the new year. Wouldn't it be ni nice if all of our problems were solved by, you know, midnight of, of the last uh, day of the year? But you know what? Practical wise, we kind of sense that, you know, we're going to carry some of these things into the new year that are unresolved. You know, God's done a lot of wonderful things, of course, and we give him all the praise and the honor and, and the glory for that. But there are some things that we're carrying and burdens of the heart and of our circumstances. And it's like, well, I guess I'm going into the new year with this. And this, this uh, will encourage you to go in as a cheerful warrior instead of just kind of that hopeless sense of, oh, well, you know, just kind of giving up in that apathetic way. I guess it'll work out sometime. But God wants to give you and I faith for the new year. You know, we can really just kind of have that, that forehead like flit and just looking, you know, into the new year and just going, wow, you know, God really is up to something. And I have faith for that. And, you know, I'm, my problems are going with me into that new year, but I know that the Lord can solve them. And if I endure, I know I will be blessed. Listen to what James says here in James 5, 10 through 11. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Oh, man, I'm excited about these words. I feel already that we're being encouraged. I'm being encouraged. But someone really needs, needs to hear this. Endurance leads to blessings. If you and I endure, we're going to be blessed. And so, right away, James, James says, take the prophets as an example. So, as we read our Bibles, and that's the key, too, for the new year, is that we could, you know, really be serious in our Bible study and our daily devotions I hope you have a, a program, a read through the Bible program, or just pick a book and just be really faithful with it. You know, every day, just find that time and make that time on your lunch break or just whenever, and just to be really, you know, serious uh, with, with the Lord there. Um, but you will find in God's Word, as you read, especially in the Old Testament, James is talking about the prophets who were really patient and had to endure. And you look back, and there were so many of them that really fought the good fight of faith, but they were pushed around and shoved around, you know, uh, for the faith. One that comes to me, I think, the most is Jeremiah. Remember him? Oh, man, this guy, you know, he suffered so much. He stands out as one who was mistreated in so many ways. He was put in the stocks, remember that? Thrown into prison and lowered into a miry dungeon. And yet he persisted in his ministry about 45 years. And, uh, you know, he didn't have much fruit. The, the city of Jerusalem fell during his prophetic ministry. And he didn't, you know, reap from his, his preaching. And, and again, pushed around, bullied, you know, by others. But he persisted. And so James is saying, take the prophets as an example. You're not alone, you know. Uh, there's people before you that have, you know, uh, endured and have fought that good fight of faith. And they spoke in the name of the Lord, you know. And this is what we're doing. We're speaking in the name of the Lord in this liberal world and society. You know, we're taking every occasion to speak for the Lord, you know, especially with all these mass shootings and, and, and so forth. You know, we're a nation that has turned away from God, and there's so much violence and crime and so much uh, immorality uh, in our nation, you know, and wow, the Lord just wants us to, to rededicate as a nation. Let's pray for our country each and every day and expect God to do some, some great things there. But they spoke in the name of the Lord, and they were an example of suffering and patience, Two words that we kind of wish weren't in our vocabulary. You know, we kind of want an easy life, and it's just the way 
that, uh, that it is, and we have an app for that, right, to make our life easier and, and, and so forth, and, you know, we can, whatever we want, we can order on Amazon, and can be there probably that afternoon, you know, and ease and, and comfort and, and uh, vacations and food and, and uh, material goods and, and social activities with our, with our friends, going out and having a good time and, and so forth. But you know what? What we need in life, because we can try to escape through all of that, but we're going to come right back to our problems. Amen? So we might as well face them now instead of trying to run away from them, pretending they don't exist, you know, escapism, fantasy, whatever it might be. No, we're going to face what we have to endure. And the Bible says that we're going to suffer. Jesus said in John 16, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. <laughs> so Jesus promised tribulation. You were going to have hard times. But then he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We're not to be those defeatist kind of people, you know, walking around like, Wow, well, I'm suffering for Jesus. You know, don't I look happy? No way. You know, we're to have that, that cheerfulness. Like Jesus said, be of good cheer. I will overcome the world. You know, you're going to have the victory. And there's no victory without a battle. And, you know, maybe some of you are just really going through it right now. You need to be encouraged that the Lord is with you. And that God has promised suffering in the Christian life. 1 Peter 5, 9 says, Resist the devil, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. And so, it's not just you, my friend. You know, we're all going through it. It might be in a different way, but the bottom line is we're suffering. You know, whatever it might be in our health and in our finances and that relationship problem and and maybe it's another year for our, our, our single folk. It's like, um, I'm alone again, you know, and, and, and so forth. Or maybe it could be on the opposite spectrum. You know, I'm, un, I'm unhappy in my, in my family, in my relationship with my spouse, or in my occupation. It's like that job I got to go back to, and, and I don't know and about the future. But the Bible says that we all experience suffering. And it's a part of the Christian life. And then it says they had, the prophets of old had patience. And it means long-suffering, slowness in avenging wrongs, and to, and to forbear, uh, which means you just kind of, you know, you roll with it, you, you give into it. But I've been watching a lot of football with all these playoffs, you know, and just those uh, aggressive football players, you know, how they kind of, roll with the, the punches kind of thing. And get, they get all tackled, and they get back up, and they, they go out and just keep on going, and they go towards that, that victory. In verse 11, it says, indeed we, we, indeed we count them blessed who endure. Now, endurance is a hard thing, right? But you'll be blessed if you do endure. Let's define, define endurance. It means steadfastness, constancy. And it means to bear up under pressure until the pressure is over. <laughs> so you can just kind of see that person under a load. But they're just like, well, okay, I got I to gotta carry this load until the Lord, you know, takes it from me. And so the mature prayer is we pray not for lighter burdens, but a stronger back. Amen? Isn't that a good mature prayer uh, for a Christian who really wants to grow in character in the Lord? Pray that prayer this week. Lord, I pray not for lighter burdens, but a stronger back. Help me, Lord, to endure and to not be uh, such a wimp, you know, when it comes to these things and not grumble like we talked about a couple weeks ago in the previous verse there. Many people exhibit a very passive patience, like, oh well, in accepting their lot in life, while others actively endure what God has for them. Do you actively endure what God has for you? I like that. You know, it's like you're, you're, uh, you're active. You know, you're on, you're on the offense instead of the, the defense. That is the kind of patience these prophets demonstrated. The word used of uh, Job is that 
great New Testament word, hupomone, which describes not a passive patience, but that gallant spirit which can breast the tides of doubt and sorrow and disaster and come out with faith still stronger on the other side. I love that. That gallant spirit. You know, it's like, I, I'm going to take this. If this is what God has allowed, I'm going to take this. You, and then it says here, you have heard of the perseverance of Job. And there's another word, you know, the perseverance of Job. And so, Job was a very patient person, and he suffered a lot, didn't he? Let's talk about the word uh, perseverance and endurance, and we'll share some scriptures on that. Hebrews 10.36 says, You have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. You've got to be under that pressure and endure, and then you'll come out and receive the blessed promises of God in fulfillment for your life. Do you believe that? Or have you been resisting them? Have you been in that non-acceptance mode? You know, just trying to squirm out of your, your problems. Brothers and sisters, let's face it with Jesus. If God has allowed it, if he's brought us to it, then he'll bring us through it. You know, I love that gospel phrase. If God has brought us to it, he's going to bring us through it. Amen? You have heard. And uh, so James is appealing to the Jewish believers here. Probably for all those stories from the Jewish synagogue when they were growing up. And the stories about Job. And the, the uh, uh, most wealthy and prosperous man of the East. And how everything was taken away from him. And his miserable comforters that tried to encourage him, and they started arguing and going back and forth. That's why the book is so long. There's all these discourses, and, and it gets kind of confusing, you know. But at the very end, we see that there's a beautiful restoration of Job's life. So we read about uh, Job's um, possessions being taken away. And I want to go back to Job chapter 1. And just uh, speak on those highlighted verses about Job's attitude. Okay? So, when everything was taken away from him, the Bible says that he, in verse uh, 21 and 22 of chapter 1, it says, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I shall return there. The Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. And so he just had such an exemplary attitude. Well, this was after, you know, his business was, was taken away, and uh, uh, his sons and his daughters were, were killed in that storm. And he came out with that. That's God-given faith, isn't it? You know, you just can't do that naturally. That is God-given. Now, Job's trials were extreme. Most of us don't fit in this category. But yet, he got through it. Praise the Lord. Then in chapter 2, his health is taken away. Remember that? And all those boils on him and, and so forth. And oh, now he's in a super bad way. And his wife says, what? Curse God and, and die. She's all upset. You know, bless her heart, Mrs. Job. And it, it says in chapter 2 and verse 10, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity? And all this, Job did not sin with his lips. So he had a little pep talk to his wife, as sick as he was, and just said, You know, honey, we, got, we have to accept uh, what God has allowed. And many times in life, you know, we're going to have these highs and lows. And we just need to know that God is the God of the mountains. God is the God of the valleys. We love to be up in the mountain. Amen? You know, we learn how to abound. And Paul says we also learn how to be abased in uh, Philippians. And in all things, we learn contentment. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Philippians chapter 4, you might want to review that chapter.
be encouraged. And so there's Job for you. And so we uh, read about the perseverance of Job and just how uh, he got through it. And then it says in verse 11, back in James chapter 5 now, you have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord. And so there is an end to our sorrows, an end to our problems. You know, praise the Lord for that. The Bible says that, you know, no temptation or trial will test us more than we can handle. God will make an escape for us that we'll be able to bear it. He knows that we're so weak, you know. But let me encourage you, my brother, my sister, you can take a lot more than you think. Think about a rubber band. You know, you look at it and you go, wow, it has a small capacity. But when you stretch it, you know, it doesn't break in, until, unless it's like super extreme. And now it has a larger capacity. Before it was only holding a couple pencils. Now it's probably holding a, a bundle of, of something that's just more important, you know, in value. And so God is stretching us through these trials. Job was a good man, but he became a better man. He was refined in the fire, and he says, I'll come through as gold. And sure enough, he did. And there's an end. God knows how much you can handle. And then he'll come through, and he will deliver you and I uh, from these trials and tribulations. Praise God for that. You know, the term phrase, it came to pass, is found 198 times in the Bible. Yeah, 198 times it came to pass. You know, it doesn't come to stay, it comes to pass. You read that in the Bible, now it came to pass. Now it came to pass Moses, and it came to pass Elijah, and so forth. And all things are coming to pass. You know, praise God for that. And uh, God is going to deliver us. And the ultimate deliverance is being in the presence of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we're not going to be here forever. You know, we have heaven to look forward to. That's the ultimate deliverance. But God wants you and I to grow. He wants us to, to get that diploma, so to speak. And we're like, it's like the school of faith. How are we doing with these uh, trials and tribulations? They're like tests. Are we passing our tests? You know, are we just getting by with a, a, a D plus or something? God wants us to excel in the Christian life. He wants us to learn these lessons and to, to accept more of the hard things that come into our lives, knowing that He is able, and we're going to trust Him. And this new year can be that faith-filled new year where it's like, you know what? God's working in, in my heart, and I want to be more faith-filled. And that is a gift in and of itself from God. Ask God for that faith. He wants to give that to you to believe Him so that you won't be under all that, that distress uh, in your life, and you know how we we just go go in that stress, and and we kind of find ways to cope with that stress that aren't that aren't healthy, and and so forth. And oh God, help us right now in Jesus' name, Lord. We just pray about that stress in our lives. We ask, Lord, that you would help us through, Lord, what we're we're experiencing, and we just pray, Lord, for strength for the new year. Lord God, to have a, a great attitude, you know, like Job, one of acceptance, Lord, and knowing that you will get us through. And there is an end, the end, like at the end of a movie. Yes, amen, in Jesus' name. And so, there will be an end. Let's read about it in Job 42, 12. Now, the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. And all of his losses were restored. He had more children, and he lived a long and full life. And saw, you know, his children's children's children to many generations. And so this is a book in the Bible that James is reviewing, and that we should review too, knowing that blessings come... When we endure. 2 Timothy 2.12 If we endure, we shall also reign with Him. I want to reign with Christ. Not just in heaven. 
I want to reign with the Lord right now over our over my situation. You know, it doesn't have, my situation doesn't have to be over for me to be happy and, and rejoicing. God wants to give me that gallant spirit, spirit, that warrior attitude, knowing that he is in charge, he is in control. Man, if he got Jeremiah through, if he got Job through, and most of all, who did he get through? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You know, when he suffered and died for our sins. Praise God, he rose again. And he is living today. And he wants us to live in that resurrection power to lift us each and every day. And we find that truly the Lord is compassionate and merciful. And that's the last couple words here. Look at that in Job 5.12. It's at 5.11 at the end. The Lord is very compassionate and merciful. And so I looked that word up and it, it just means that the Lord is extremely compassionate. He's very, very uh, pitiful. He understands us. He knows how much we can take. He knows our frame, it says in Psalm 103, that we're but dust. <laughs> we're but dust. And so we see that, you know, God shows his tenderness by not giving us more troubles than we can handle. And he proves his mercy by taking us out of all troubles in the end. And so another good one I've always enjoyed is Psalm 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Wow, praise God for that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You might ask, why do I have so many problems? I get out of one and something you know, new, new comes up. Why does my car keep breaking down? You know, why do I keep having these, these run-ins at, at work or, or whatever? Well, you know, all I can say is that the Lord is with you, and He's with me, and He's with all of us. And He's very merciful and, and compassionate, and He's going to get us through, and we're going to see just how, how tender, you know, and compassionate the Lord really is. Because he got us through, and he did it in such a way that left his beautiful mark on our life. It's like, wow, God did that for me. I really am his child. He loves me. He got me through. I just can't believe how much the Lord loves me. You did it again, Lord. You did it again. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? You did it again, Lord. If he's done it before, he's going to do it again. So don't give up. You'll reap if you just hang tight. And you'll be blessed indeed if you endure. Let's pray about this. Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you, Lord, for this Bible study, these songs that we have sung. Lord, we just want to just tell you that you are in control and that we are, are yours and we are redeemed through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, you have so many blessings for us coming up in the new year. And we just want to, Lord, close out this year and say thank you. And Lord, go into the new year and also say thank you. Thank you for all that lies ahead. And God, for those who are carrying their problems into the new year, what's the reality for probably most of us? God, give us the strength and hope that this year, Lord, you're going to do such a great work with all this, with all that's going on. And we don't know how it's going to work out or how it's going to resolve or what twists and turns there's going to going to be but we know lord that you are there and lord that you have gone before us and that you will guide us all the way through lord in such a beautiful way and so we pray blessings now upon our families our upon every individual watching in the name of jesus christ we ask lord for that capacity to endure and to endure with a good quality attitude, Lord God, and a rejoicing spirit, and to be more on the offense instead of the defense in life, Lord. Keep us from victimization of feelings and just that self-pity attitude. And we just pray, Lord God, that we'll have a robust spirit, Lord God. And people will look at us and probably think we have no problems, but we do, Lord. But we're just trusting in you. And we know, Lord, that you are very compassionate and merciful and you will deliver your children. You've promised, Lord, 
And we give it to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's sing one more song. And it's Peace Give I to Thee. Then we'll do Faith and Hope. And we just need to have all of this going into the new year. Amen? So sing with me. Peace give I to thee. grace and enjoy all that God has for us. Don't we want that? It's possible because the Word of God says so. May the Lord bless you and keep you now. Have a great uh, week. I'll see you in the new year. As my dad used to always say, see you next year. And um, it's true. I'll see you in 2020 and we'll look back I saw a little post on Facebook that says, hindsight is 2020. So we're going to see a lot as we go into the new year. All that God did in the past year to give us faith for the future and all that he has in that new year. It's good to know uh, that we don't know. And to just have that mis mystery and that adventure, you know, that God is up to something more than we know. Eye has not seen nor ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And I know you love him, and the Lord just wants you to be confident in that. So we'll be here uh, next uh, week, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And just keep inviting your friends about uh, this program. Keep on posting your prayer requests and so forth, and uh, wait for the credits.